Hello friends, greetings from the ENT service of Kokilaban Dhirubhai Mbani Hospital. Today, in the time of the pandemic with COVID-19, there is something which is alarming our friends all over the country. Mucormycosis is raging through our beloved country. And this message is to allay fears and clear any doubts you may have regarding this problem. Firstly, mucormycosis is a medical emergency. This can be treated if diagnosed early. But remember the old adage, prevention is better than cure. Every day that you delay in the diagnosis of mucormycosis, there can be complications because this disease <coughs> is time sensitive. If caught early, it is treatable. To treat this, you need to have access to a specialized center where in our hospital, we have what is called a mucor response team where we have our infectious control specialist, <coughs> the ENT surgeon, the neuro team, the dental surgeons were indicated and the endocrine specialists. We all work together in tackling this problem. So you might ask me, what are the symptoms? So this is seen in patients who have had COVID. In yesteryears, we used to treat one or two patients who were immune compromised or who had undergone organ transplants. But today, most of the patients we are seeing have suffered from COVID-19. So what are the symptoms? The patient may have headache, nasal blockage, blood stain, nasal discharge, may have pain around the eyes, swelling of the eyes, redness of the eyes, swelling of the eyes, eyelids, and a reduced acuity of vision. Sometimes they may also present with some neurological signs. They may have low-grade fever, sometimes cough, and blood-stained sputum. So these are some of the warning signs for mucor. How do you diagnose it? So basically, a simple examination by the local ENT surgeon would help. Where we conduct a, a local examination, we do what is called a diagnostic nasal endoscopy, take a nasal swab where indicated, we do an MRI of the sinuses, the orbit and the brain where indicated and sometimes a CT scan too. The diagnosis is mainly done by what is called a KOH mount, fungal culture and now recently our hospital will soon offer you a PCR test to detect this fungus accurately and smoothly. So what is the treatment for this fungus? Essentially, you have to control the blood sugar levels and you have to offer targeted surgery which is done in a specialized center where the dead tissue is removed and adequate surgery and cleansing of the wound is done. Followed by antifungal medications which are usually given for four to six weeks. In the initial days, these antifungal medications are given through the intravenous route and when the condition stabilizes and the patient is on his or her way to recovery, then they may be converted to oral medications. But all these medicines are toxic in some way or the other and a careful monitoring of their potassium levels, their kidney function tests and other parameters are to be done. Follow-up scans and examinations are also done. And sometimes in severe cases where facilities exist, hyperbaric oxygen treatment also helps. So basically you have a team who handles such cases and the patients are monitored very carefully. How do you prevent this? Most important, 
good control of the blood sugar and the other most important thing is use of steroids in COVID-19. Steroids are a lifesaver but someone who doesn't have fever, who is maintaining normal oxygen on room air should preferably not be exhibited to steroids. Steroids are indicated where the oxygen saturation starts dropping or if some blood parameters sensitizes you to the fact that the disease may be taking a turn for the worse. Whenever you do give steroids, they are to be given by a specialist who is informed about the dose and generally we advise that it should be given for in most cases up to 10 days. Most importantly, when the patient is going home on discharge, they are counseled about the warning signs. That is, if you have a persistent headache, if you have something which looks like a cold, pain and discomfort around the eyes or any nasal discharge, unexplained cough or an unexplained fever, please see your doctor to examine and investigate you thoroughly. Now there are certain myths about this which need to be clarified. So first clarification, this is not a black fungus. The black fungus is actually a fungus of a different family which has a melanin pigment in it and it leads to a black surface. Although when mucor happens there is a lot of dead tissue and because of that the areas may be darkened. So people talk of it as the black fungus but mucor is not black fungus. Next, mucor is normally there in your environment both outdoors and indoors but it doesn't harm you because you're a normal healthy being. So what happens when you're immune compromised, when you may have undergone organ trans transplant, if you have an injury on the road and a, con a contaminated wound, then you may be exposed to mucor. But otherwise, mucor rails, spores are there in your everyday environment and they don't harm you. The other myth is that it's spread through use of oxygen and ventilators and the like. My colleagues all over the country have done thorough studies and investigations and the use of oxygen does not cause mucor. In fact, most studies suggest that mucor is caused, one, by COVID-19, two, uncontrolled diabetes and the use of high doses of steroids. Lastly, there is no role for prophylactic antifungal treatment. The medicines are costly and it's to be used for those people who need them. So my appeal to you is one, don't panic. If you have any such symptoms, meet your doctor immediately and please feel free to contact us at Kokilaben Dhirubhai Umbani Hospital. We are here to serve you. Thank you.